Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to STD Gems. If you've been watching these in the order that I've been making them, uh, you know we've covered the beginning of the non-modifying sequence operations, and today we're going to cover all the rest of them, because they're all fairly related. They have to do with finding and searching. So first off, what is the difference between finding and searching? Because they seem to be making a distinction here in the naming of these functions. And as far as I can tell, um, find... Find is when you are considering elements individually. You're not uh, taking into account their neighbors or their uh, relative position in the container. So if you say, you know, find five, it is going to give you an iterator to this element here. That's a find operation. Whereas if you were to say, you know, search for the sequence four, five, six, it has to look at multiple elements to find the position where that sequence exists. So that's for me, that's the difference between find and search, although we'll see a little bit of inconsistency there in the naming as we go a little longer. So let's look at the simplest one first, the simple find, and you've probably seen me use this one before. It is super common, super useful. You give it a value, and it will give you an iterator to that value in the container. If the value does not exist in the container, it will give you an iterator to the end. And then find if is the same thing, only instead of searching for a value, it uses a predicate to determine. When a predicate returns true, then that means the, uh, the element matches and it'll return an iterator to that. And then find if not is exactly the same idea, only the predicate returns false, then it is going to, you know, give you an iterator. So it's not that useful, you could just negate the uh, predicate, get the same result, but it's there if you want it. So run std find over the entire A container, we'll tell it to search for four, we use that uh, iterator then, we do some iterator math, and we get the index of that iterator in the container. And here we see the index of four is four. Pretty simple. If we give it something that is not in the container, then it should return end, and that should be... Yeah, the index is 11, which is past the last element of the container. So when you are doing a find and you want to check to see if there, it was actually in the container, you should be comparing with end. Now let me give you a little puzzle here. Let's say I'm going to put multiple, uh, multiple ones in this container. And I want to search, but I want to search for the last one. So let's put three in here. But I want an algorithm that will give me the position of the last one. Uh, how do I do that? Because search is going to start from the beginning, not search, find. It's going to start from the beginning, and it is going to return when it finds the first match. So how can we get it to return when it finds the last match? If you're game, pause the video and see if you can figure it out. So the way I would do it is I would use std find, as usual, but I would use r begin and r end to get reverse iterators. So iterators that would start from here and work this way. And that way, you would be guaranteed to find the last one in the container first. And that's the one that would be reported. The problem with this is that when we want to get our index, we've got, we want to compare this reverse iterator to a normal forward iterator, the, just the begin. But you can't really do that. There are different kinds of iterators. It doesn't work. So how do we get our index? Well, let's take this opportunity to do a little bit of a deep dive into how reverse iterators work. Not a super deep dive, just a little bit of an interesting story here. So, forward iterators, you know, the range basically runs from the begin, which is the first element, to the end, which is the element past the last element. Now, the begin of a reverse iterator is going to point to the last element, and it, the end, our end, is going to point past the first element, or before the first element, I should say. So you can see there's a slight offset of one here, and when you're dealing with converting between um, reverse iterators and normal iterators, you often have to add or subtract one from the iterator in order to make them point to the same element. But we don't need to compare reverse and forward iterators here. So let's say we've got some reverse iterator, it's pointing to this element here, and we want to know this element's index from the beginning of the container. Well, we can just basically do r end minus i. And that gives us this distance here. We want this distance here though, so we should probably just subtract one more from that. And if we have this distance, then we know the index. So here we go, a dot uh, r end minus, that's not right, minus i, and we subtract one to fix that up. And also we should change the uh, message here. 
So it looks like this, and it should give us 10, 9, 8, 7. And it does indeed give us 7. So there's just a little bit of a, a look at how you have to deal with reverse iterators. But yeah, we can use reverse iterators to find the last incidence of some element in a container. And it's pretty useful. Alright, so we're going to skip over find end. Uh, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, find first up. This is actually a very interesting one. Uh, what it does is you can give it instead of giving it one element and it has to search for it, you can give it a list of elements or a sequence and it will find the first element that matches any one in that list or sequence. There are two main versions. One uses the equals operator to compare and the other one you can give it a uh, different binary predicate to compare from the sequence and the target container that you're searching. Alright, so let's say I got a string here, it's got some words, they are separated by these delimiters here. Then I've got a list of delimiters, and I'm going to find the first delimiter that matches my list. So here we see we've got first, last, and then s first, s last. And first and last are the range to examine, and s is the uh, range to search for. So there we go, we're just going to have s.begin to s.end is our examination range, and delimit is our... Uh, delimiter range that we're going to be searching for and the index of the first delimiter is 3 0 1 2 3 that's correct now let's remove the semicolon from our list of delimiters and now what is it going to find for us now it finds the comma we could remove the comma maybe add a question mark and a star in there and it is going to find the colon so this guy is pretty useful, I've used him before, and one of the main uses is if you want to split a string up, if you're parsing some kind of a uh, scripting language or something, you can use find first of to build your own simple string splitting routine. Alright, so just as a little demonstration, I used find first of to create a string splitting algorithm here. It's not super complicated, but it might be interesting. I'm not going to go over it here because it's going to make the video too long, but if you're interested, you can pause, you can try to figure out how this works, you can try to implement it yourself as a little challenge. And just to test it here, I do chili split on S and the delimiters, and what we get is we get it splits it up between 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ignore this um, delimiter or this uh, divider at the end here. It puts a divider after every element, so there's nothing that comes after this though. So now if I tell it to split on semicolon, comma, and colon, and I run it, now it splits all my words up. Now the last pure find algorithm is mismatch. I consider this one pure find. Um, it actually compares two sequences together, but it in each sequence, it doesn't, it doesn't consider the neighbors of the element. You'll see what I mean in a second. So basically, mismatch runs over two ranges, so you got to give it a range, and you've got to give it at least the beginning of the second range that it's going to run over. And it's going to compare them, and you can compare them using uh, equals operator, or you can supply your own binary predicate. And there's also, I don't really understand why, but there's also two versions. One version takes a full range and then a start for the second range, and the other one takes two full ranges. I'm not sure why you would need two full ranges, but it's there if you're interested. And it returns a pair, so it'll give you the iterator to the first range and the second range at the point where you find a mismatch. So I've got two vectors of strings here, b and bp, and they mismatch at index 4, you can see here. So let's run mismatch on that. So we use std mismatch, b.begin, b.n, bp.begin. Now we want to, this is going to return a pair, and we want the iterator into the first range, so I'm just going to go dot first on the return value, store that in i, and then we'll just uh, compare that with b.begin, ah, yeah, b.begin, and it should work, should give us 4. There you go, four. So it finds the first place where they do not match up, which may or may not be useful. I personally don't know if I've ever used this, but I see where it could come up. So those are the finders. They consider individual elements. Now let's look at the searchers. These ones are more like the search that you think of when you're thinking of like a, uh, a Google search. You can search for sequences of characters or sequences of elements in a particular order and it will search through a container and find that same sequence. So the basic one is obviously search and you give it a uh, sequence to search through. You give it a sequence to search for and it will return you an iterator to the first instance of that sequence. And you got the same basic song and dance, you can use the equals operator, you can use your own custom binary predicate. There's a special one down here that uses a searcher, I'll talk about that in a second. 
So let's say we got some string, it's the haystack, and we want to search for the needle in the haystack. So we just pass in the ranges for the haystack and the needle, and it will give us an iterator to where it found it. Or it'll give us an iterator to the end if it does not exist in the haystack. You can see it find it at position 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and there you go. There it is, right here. It's pretty simple, it's obviously very useful if you're working with strings. Uh, not much more to say about the standard search. Now there's one special overload of this function and it takes something called a searcher. So you can implement, and there are some implemented special search algorithms that optimize for different things. And this version only takes the uh, range for the haystack and then it takes the searcher. You've got three searchers, the default one, and then you've got these Boyer Moore, Moore type guys. And the difference is the default searcher, it doesn't do any pre-processing, it doesn't take any additional memory uh, and it runs in basically n times m time where n and m are the size of your haystack and your needle. Boyer Moore can give you a little bit better time complexity but at the cost of a little more upfront processing and it takes more memory to do the search. Now I don't generally use these versions myself, I don't bother with it, but if you're doing a lot of text processing, a lot of text searching with big texts, big strings, you might get some benefit out of using these specialized guys. So just, you know, you can be aware that they exist. The way it works is you call std search with your haystack range and a default searcher and you construct, you'd construct your searcher giving it the range of the needle. And there you go, it's not, it's not too much more complicated. So that's the basic search. Now, there's another search that's not called search, it's called find end, but it's not a find, it's a search. It looks for a sequence, but it finds the last sequence of elements in a range. So this one will stop when it finds the first uh, match. This one will basically start from the back. And you might be saying, well Chili, why can't you just use our begin, our end, with search? Let's try it out. Let's, in the haystack, let's put S5J in the beginning, S5J in the end, and we're going to search for the last one using our begin, our end. So what we're going to do it. we're going to use our reverse iterator, fix up the find the find the bugger, and if we run it, we get negative one. That's weird. That shouldn't happen, right? Unless it went through the whole sequence in reverse and it didn't find S5J, even though S5J is in there twice. Why is that? Well, the reason why is because it's searching in reverse. So it's actually not searching for S5J, it's searching for J5S. If we do J5S, we see it's going to find it right away, 22. So if you use reverse iterators to do your search, you basically have to reverse both of them. So you can reverse your string, or you can keep your string the same order, but reverse your needle iterators. And you see that works. So it's possible, it's just a little annoying. And what find end is, is it does that, but you don't have to worry about reversing your iterators. The one downside to find end is that it doesn't have anything for your uh, search policies. So if you want to search, if you want to use a search policy, but you want to find the last thing, you should be using reverse iterators. So again, find end is it's a little redundant, but it's it's nice not to have to deal with all that reversing. Now, adjacent find is a little interesting because it finds two elements that are the same. So it finds the first position in which two elements are the same. So if I run a JSON find on my haystack, uh, let's see what it gets. 22. And that's right, that's right here, right? And if I get rid of this one, and I put a, uh, a double five here, it's gonna get me two. Now one thing I just noticed is that if you use reverse iterators to run a search to find the last occurrence of a sequence, it will find you the last occurrence, but it's going to index you into the last character of that occurrence, not the first one. So you've got to do some extra fix-up to if you want to get an index to the first character of the last occurrence of a subsequence. Just a little thing to worry about. And again, if you use find end, it'll do that for you. But yeah, just something that came to my mind here. Uh, anyways, when you adjacent find is useful, but there's something cool with it. You can give it a binary predicate and it will find two neighboring elements that satisfy that predicate and it doesn't have to be equality. So let's say I've got a uh, container of ints and I want to find the position uh, where you've got two elements where the first one is half of the second one. So I can do a JSON find x.begin x.end and let's take in the two ints int a int b and let's run a little thing here. Return a times two is equal to b. And we'll do that. We'll close that off. This container doesn't match, so we'll put x.begin in there. We run it. It gives us 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 
and 14 is half of 28. So you can use this to find adjacent elements that satisfy some kind of condition, and that can be actually pretty interesting and useful. So Jason Find looks for neighboring elements that satisfy some condition relative to each other. Search N uh, allows you to search for N elements that are consecutive copies, but it's not quite as powerful as a JSON Find. So the base form, you give it a range, you give it a count, and you give it a value. So you, you can say, give me, let's search for the place where there are five consecutive S's and it'll do that for you. And there's also a version that takes a binary predicate, but it takes a binary predicate and a value, and it will compare that value to every element in the range using the binary predicate. So it doesn't compare the elements in the range to each other. So you can't do something like give me a sequence of five where every element increases or doubles in the sequence. You can't do that. You can only give me, give me a sequence of five where every element satisfies some predicate with respect to a single value that I pass in. So it's not as flexible as a JSON find, but you can find, you know, repeating, long repeating sequences with it. So here I got my haystack, I got four fives in a row, I've also got two fives in a row here, and I'm gonna search for the place where I've got four fives in a row, and it's gonna give me 13, which seems about correct. And that's it, that's all the finders and the searchers, all in one video. Um, regardless, you know, of course, I believe that this guy should be named Search, and I believe that this guy should be also named Search, but whatever, right? So obviously if you're doing text processing, these guys are gonna come in very handy. But I mean, also just in game stuff, I mean, Find, you use that all the time. If you've seen me doing my thing in Project Twin, you know I use Find to find uh, surfaces in my surface codex. And I also think things like adjacent find, they can have some very interesting applications. It's fun to think about. But that's gonna about do it for today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button, it helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more STD gems. Thank you.